Hi, it's Kim. So today I wanted to share some of the books in my art book collection. Some of these books are my sister's but she was okay with me showing them off. And art books are something that I've been collecting for a while and I just enjoy browsing through the pretty pictures and looking at the different styles of the artists. So um, I have thought about how I'm going to introduce you the books in some coherent fashion. So I've divided it up into several categories. So the first will go through the general mainstream art books, like just art book, like textbook kind of art books. And then there's the Instagram artist and then Sean Tan who gets his own category because he's just an amazing artist and Japan themed art books. So the category titles, um, if it doesn't make sense now, I it, as we go through the video and through the categories, I think it will make more sense. Anyways, let's get into the first category, the general mainstream art books. So these are all the general mainstream art books that I have um, with me today. And starting from the top, we have Art Director's Annual. 90. So this book, um, I actually got it at my local library for 50 cents, so you can't really go wrong because I set my standards or expectations very low, but it was it's actually just um, a collection of modern art and some of the stories or messages that they're trying to send through that, and the photographs are pretty nice and there's some pretty cool work. I, I guess modern art isn't really my thing because so, I kind of think modern art, I don't really understand what's going on at all but yes yeah, so sometimes I feel like I see something like with this kind of photo it makes me think oh there's something there but is there anything there I'm, I'm not like what, what I'm not sure what to not think about this when I look at it but it's a very strange experience and I don't regret it because it was 50 cents and this is the second book I'm into impressionism such as um artists such as Monet, Renoir, Degas and I bought this secondhand at a bookstore because buying secondhand books is a smart way to spend your money. And I think personally, this level of um, abstractness in art is what I prefer. Like, slightly, you can see what the artist is trying to convey. Like, the message is still there, but and you still have like amazing composition, the color, and everything. And but it's not a photograph. Hyperrealism is a bit strange for me because. Um, we have photographs instead of wanting to just portray subjects exactly as it, as it is. And I think Impressionism was a time when people were first being quite rebellious. So there's, I don't know, there's some amazing artworks. Like, this is so beautiful. And, and I look at it and I think about the lighting, the colors and the composition, as well as I guess the meaning of what they were trying to like show with their painting, like how it doesn't have to be exactly there, but you can see the way that they tried to portray or a more stylistic aspect to their quality of paintings. A pretty heavy book, it's like 500 pages, I'm not sure, like it's like, uh, yeah, now you can see what's coming next, but um, this is a pretty big book and it is one of those books that I will definitely have in my future house on the co coffee table for people to just browse through and it goes through the history of artworks and basically all basically all genres of art and all styles and it's an encyclopedia pretty much and I have not read most of it but I like to look through it and just admire the amount of work and dedication that um, people have had for the love of art to collect this and put it into one large book because this is this is it this is like the one book that pretty much has every aspect of it and it's so beautiful yes but it is pretty heavy and I guess some of the pictures because they are putting all into one are quite small like this is slightly smaller than the height of my index finger so that's something to think about but it's a pretty nice book and the cover this pink is quite pretty as well so this is an anatomy book but i think anatomy books are becoming kind of obsolete with the rise of the internet and you can look up pretty much any position or um a body part online and you can that's your source or reference for 
body positions and anatomy. So there's this. It's quite popular and it's a great book, but I won't flick through it because like otherwise I have to blur stuff and now here are the category for instagram artists so the first the top book isn't actually an instagram artist that i personally follow and these are actually all my sister's books but let's go through them anyways so um i put 100 ghosts into this category because well it's just a small book that has a lot of ghost pictures in it but um the reason that i thought it belonged in the category of instagram artists is because um jake parker who started Inktober actually suggested um, in one of his videos about drawing a hundred things of anything really and I thought this was a good example of someone who has done that. I don't think he necessarily had um, followed Jake Parker although it's possible that he did. Um, I don't know him personally but it, it, shows, it goes to show that you get a final product and a collection of um, pictures at the end with a hundred ghosts or it could be a hundred under hats or something like that and I thought that was pretty cool um, and with regarding Jake Parker I don't really have any personal opinions about him but I there was a lot of drama recently oh the drama oh my god no, no I, I hate drama anyways next now the second one is art of Koyamori so Koyamori was an artist that I used to follow on DeviantArt from way back, so that was a long time ago when DeviantArt used to be a thing. <laughs> I'm sure it still is a thing, I just haven't been on there for a long time actually. And I do follow Koyamori on Instagram now. And the watercolors were amazing. Um, I don't know if Koyamori is a he or a she actually, but I think Koyamori would be a she. But that's just a guess. So anyways, <laughs> um, her watercolors were part of the reason that I started my own watercolors and but obviously it's nowhere near where this is but I think her style reminds me of kind of half anime with especially with the watercolor texture it gives some kind of I don't know with the prints there's a bit of like tradition mixed with mod, mod modern aspects of um art so I think there's a bit of Japanese influence definitely and I love these like patterns like this shirt and all these pictures are beautiful and the second instagram artist book was grow now we have the art of heikala works and thoughts so um this book i personally like a slightly better than the previous one because it has a bit of writing and i guess some thought processes on why um or what kind of um thought processes the artist was going through as they were drawing it so like for example with this picture they go through um how they like to incorporate fantasy elements or like what kind of characters or why they enjoy drawing nature and everything and i think that makes this art book more personal because you kind of get an idea of like not not just about the inspiration but like the tools and the materials and it brings you closer to their work space and their i guess thinking or planning and for people who are actually into drawing they might like this book better if you can't buy both I don't know if your budget is limited but I think you could totally go for both um, art books if you're especially into like watercolors and slightly fantasy and beautiful watercolor artworks like these are all just really nice artworks and yeah so this was Hey Kala works and thoughts oh and this is a last minute thought but the paper this one uh, it feels not like shiny glossy paper but then this one there's some glossy paper and then some like not glossy paper i don't know it's like am i over i'm not sure if i'm overthinking this but the way that this um the ink that it's been printed like this p paper quality is quite interesting actually like there's a bit of texture here it's quite interesting okay third category the sean tan category um sean tan gets his own category and his he has a lot of he works with a lot of different mediums right um from paintings to sculptures and also there were some i don't know different kinds of paintings but it's it's insane like when I look at his paintings, it's, there's something a bit surreal about it, but at the same time, it's just 
fits the what um, the story or what he's going for so well. So I will mention that the second book is a picture book, so it's not necessarily an art book. And I guess technically speaking, um, this book is not not really an art book, but it's one of those philosoph philosophical questions where um, what makes an art book an art book? Because picture books have artworks in them. They are, each picture is an individual artwork, but does that make it an art book? Well, I was thinking about whether to include it or not, but these sculptures, like some of these sculptures are just so amazing. Like this is Rapunzel. So he, his sculptures are kind of like abstract, but you can tell where they're getting them from. And uh, this is the little red cap or this book has um, old folk tales and he has made a sculpture for each short um, folk tale passage. So the stories are not very long because they, these are just small passages from that. But oh my gosh, the texture, like it's so beautiful. And the way he interprets storytelling or um, certain animals or people into his sculptures is quite insane because you wouldn't... It, he sees it in a slightly different perspective, I think. We're, he's trying to convey the same message, but through a more interesting and, I guess, a unique view. That, And also, um, I have actually read uh, an essay that he has written on his website that I might link in the descriptions. That was quite interesting. And it was talking about his creative process when he was writing the picture book, The Rabbits. This is Kikaida by Sean Tan, and it's a collection of paintings, but the story itself, I don't want to spoil the story, but it's about someone who doesn't fit in, and him trying to find his place, I guess. It's very strange, but this is not really an art book because it's clearly a picture book, but it is an art book. It is a book that contains art. So Okay, so now we have uh, the Japan category. This is going to get a bit difficult because my Japanese studying has not really improved much from the high school days. So this is Gaiju Zukan. Gaiju Zukan uh, by Kenshin Yonetsu, but I can't read <laughs> the kanji for. Oh yeah, so comes with the CD. But this, um, the artist actually, yes, the artist, the music artist also draws artworks. And along with his album, um, he has released a selection of his sketches and drawings. And along with a short story or passage, unfortunately, I cannot read this to you. But some of his drawings are very insane like there's a bit of darkness in it and the lines are pretty cool i love the black and white simplicity but at the same time it's not that simple there's something a bit garish about it but at the same time it's telling a story and conveying it in a very succinct way cute the drawings look more refined as um the newer albums are released so that's pretty cool as well now these two books go together it's by Florent Chavouet so another foreign name um so there's Tokyo on foot Wanabeshima Island Japan so these are both artworks from his sketchbooks where he explores his stay at Japan and has made it into a book so what he see sees and what he does he has drawn it and then wrote small commentaries about it and it's a pretty fun way to look at Japan because it's not anything like crazy but there's art and beauty in everyday aspects so I think that's why these books are pretty cool like like literally this is just a bowl of udon but it's not just a bowl of udon it's a bowl of happiness <laughs> it's I guess he's showing his experiences of like travel and just the way he interprets that into I guess quirky Ill illustrations were quite fun and you should definitely like read some of these like funny commentaries as well they're pretty cool 
So they do go together, but if you want to get only one, I guess this is the original number one, and then if you have extra money, this is number two. So these were actually all the books I went through, and it turns out that I had more books than I expected. I'm glad to have shared some of the books and the reasons why I just enjoyed looking through these art books. Like, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did because I love looking through books like these. Anyways, um, so those were all the art books. If I end up growing my collection and the I actually get my own coffee table in my own home, then I can do a part two of this improvement, so maybe 10 years later down the line. <laughs> but thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I might do more art-themed videos in the future, but, but I don't plan on drawing anything, but these books are pretty cool, and you should check some of them out, actually. Some of them are um, pretty interesting to look at, and or start your own collection as well. Bye.